step for changing out your battery is removing your seat. On the back of the seat, there's a Phillips head screw, unscrew it, then you have to push the seat down to remove it from its clip and clamps. If you have a sissy bar, watch out, you don't want to scratch the back of the metal. On the side of the motorcycle is a battery cover. You just pull it down with force and lift it up and it comes off. You can also remove the terminals and fuses from the side of the battery holder. On the bottom, this is a 10 millimeter socket. Undo it, it comes straight out, and then you lift the clamp off that holds down your battery. Be careful while you're unscrewing your terminals. Usually you should undo your negative first, but in this case you have to undo the positive as it's set on the outside. So just don't let your wrench touch any of the framework or metal. Once you get that undone, you can pull the battery out and then access your negative terminal. Now for my new battery, I decided to go with this battery tender lithium ion battery. It was only about $110 shipped to my house. And what I love about it is it's only half the size of an AGM style battery. It's much thinner, shorter, and the weight is only about a third. And I, I can't tell you how much that it's, it's amazing how lightweight this battery is and it has the same cold cranking apps. They give you these foam little pads so you can insert it in the compartment and keep everything nice and tight. Also with my Blue Fire security system, I'll be able to place this under the battery without any damage. I'm not going to be using the remote start setup for this, so I'm going to clip away all the extra wires. All you need is the black and the red for the motion sensor. Now with the much smaller battery, it allows us much more space inside the battery compartment for our security system. I'll just pull off the 3M tape from both the sensor and the speaker and place it right at the bottom of the box. This will give a nice solid mounting point, so anytime the bike is shaken or feels a good vibration, it should trip the sensor. And even then, the battery is still much, much too big for the space. So I'll start adding in these foam pads just to kind of fill it out so there's no more vibration. After some trial and error and the battery sitting nicely with its pads, you can start connecting your terminals to the battery. Uh, I'm going to grab the negative from the Harley and then take my black wire. I put a little blue eyelet to make it a little cleaner and easier to connect and connect it to your negative terminal. It should be a Phillips head screw, screw it down nice and tight, and then you can fit the battery into its place. Same goes for your positive wires. Grab everything that's red and connect it to your terminal. I had to connect the mine to the top of the battery rather than the side, which did throw some of the wire rotting off a little bit, but nothing's gonna be too much of an issue because I have a lot of extra space and everything should be safe and, and contained. Also, I grabbed some extra foam padding and I jammed it into the side just so the battery didn't move side to side or back or front. Now we can bolt down our battery strap with our 10 millimeter bolt. That way we keep everything in place and nothing can fall out of the side. Then you take your terminals and fuses, connect them back onto the strap on their clips, and then the battery cover can slide on over top. Use constant even pressure and push into the clamps and it should snap in place. Just be careful not to clip any of the wires as they have been rerouted. Also our battery charging cable tuck in the bottom so it doesn't get hung up. Now the final step is just reattaching your seat and bolting it down. Then you can do a final test.